Hey gang, welcome to my channel. I'm the Pony 314, and this time around we have one of the finest military bolt action rifles of all time. The Rifle of Empire, the short magazine Lee Enfield, number one Mark III star. Boy, isn't that a mouthful. So anyway, here are the basics. This is a bolt action magazine fed rifle chambered in 303 British. Its magazine was detachable, held 10 rounds. The rear sight adjusted out to 2,000 yards, has a thumb operated safety right here, and has a distinctive blunt nose. I rather like the look of that, by the way. So, anyway, the term Lee Enfield comes from. James Paris Lee, he was the one who designed the rifle's bolt system, and Enfield, England's Royal Small Arms Factory, where the rifling was designed. Short comes from the fact that this was a so-called short rifle. That meant that instead of being available in a long rifle for infantry and a short carbine for cavalry, a short rifle was one of intermediate length that could be used by either. And of course, magazine, because it was magazine fed. So then, the Lee Enfield was a redesign of the earlier Lee Metford, which was adopted by the British Army in 1888, I think, which looked and functioned very similar to this. This was a black powder rifle, uh, a black powder magazine rifle, that is to say, and it was pretty advanced for its time, apart from that whole black powder thing. At that time, around 1888, the armies of Europe were already starting to make the shift to this newfangled thing called smokeless powder. But to skip through a potentially long story, the Lee Metford went through a couple of changes. Well, it went through a lot more than a couple. The magazine, for instance, was changed from eight round single stack to 10 round staggered. The sights and the safety were changed. There was also, of course, the shift to smokeless powder ammunition. And this new rifle, the Magazine Lee Enfield, as it was called, which, by the way, that was still available in rifle and carbine form, started replacing the Lee Metford in 1895. Now, let's move ahead 10 years to 1905. A new version, the short magazine Lee Enfield Mark I, was introduced. See, this is now is the aforementioned short rifle. And while the earlier versions were, the rounds were loaded singly, this one, the new version, incorporated a stripper clip loading system. And this was the rifle that introduced that really cool looking blunt nose. I don't know why I like that, I just kind of do. But anyway, to the matter of stripper clips, yes, you did not reload this rifle by changing out the magazine. The magazine stayed with the rifle. You usually only removed it for unloading your rifle and of course for cleaning. Okay, let's keep it going. Now we're 1907. The short magazine Lee Enfield Mark III, with modifications to the sight and the stripper clip guide, was designed to fire a new Spitzer type 303 caliber British rifle cartridge. The, uh, this was the rifle. The British soldier took to war in 1914, when this little dust-up, called the Great War, began. But early on, it became clear that the short magazine Lee Enfield Mark III was a little too complicated for mass production, certainly for a war that size. So, in late 1915, a new version, yep, another version, the short magazine Lee Enfield Mark III Star was introduced, which, of course, is what this is. So, here's what they did. It did away with a very awkward magazine cutoff. I mean, I don't even know how many people use those anyway, but yep, they did away with that. Uh, the sights were simplified. The windage adjustment was eliminated. The long range volley sight was eliminated. The cocking piece, that's, that's this right here, by the way, had uh, previously been round, and this was changed to a flat serrated piece. So now with the short magazine Lee Enfield Mark III Star, whew, 
God, that takes a long time to say. We have the version that would become legend during the First World War. This was the standard rifle of British, Commonwealth, and Colonial forces during World War I. It did not take long for those issued it to realize they had a fine rifle on their hands. One of the finest, actually. Yes, it was extremely accurate and it was extremely reliable, but a lot of rifles could claim that. But this, 10 rounds as opposed to 5 rounds in the German Mauser, the Russian Mosin Nagant, or the American Springfield 1903, or 8 rounds loaded singly in the French Lebel, so on and so forth. 10 rounds can make a lot of difference when the shooting starts. Also, it had this extremely quick and smooth action, and the bolt handle drops your shooting hand right by the trigger. That short action also allows most shooters to chamber the next round while keeping the sights on target. Well, not if you're left-handed like me, but that's another story. So, 10 rounds, fast firing, in fact, so fast that there was this concept called the Mad Minute. That means a trained soldier being able to fire off up to 30 aim shots in one minute, and that includes reloading. And actually, quite a few British and Commonwealth troops could pull that off. In fact, this fired so fast in the right hands that some German troops even reported coming under machine gun fire, when in reality, it was just skilled riflemen with the short magazine Lee Enfield. So, anyway, this one right here, short magazine Lee Enfield Mark III Star, would serve the British Empire through the interwar years and took on the name number one Mark III Star in 1926. And there's a common belief we have these days, that this was a standard in World War I, while the somewhat different number four Lee Enfield was the standard in World War II. Well, that's kind of, sort of true. But the number four wasn't adopted till 1941. The number one Mark III star was still in widespread use through to the end of the war, particularly in places like the Mediterranean, Burma, the Pacific. In fact, Australia and India manufactured this for their own use, and in Australia's case, it remained their standard issue military rifle into the 50s. And so, for an old World War I era beast like this, that's pretty impressive. So, I think it's time we put a pause on the history and get to the fun part, putting holes in a bleeding zombie target. Uh, before we do, just want to remind you all, there is a link in the description if you'd like to support us on Patreon. If you want to help keep this channel going, would not say no. But anyway, come on everybody, let's get to the range. Welcome to the Municipal Shooting Range in Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. And today we have the last rifle of Empire, the Lee Enfield. Specifically, the short magazine, Lee Enfield, number one, Mark III. And we have our zombie downrange. Let's see what I could do to it with the last rifle of Empire. Yeah, you gotta love those hang fires, huh? Even after being retired by British, Commonwealth, and Colonial forces, the short magazine Lee Enfield, number one Mark III star, that's still really long to say, would find its way in the hands of Third World Armies and surgeon groups, including the Mujahideen of Afghanistan, who used these to oppose the Russians back in the 80s. Sounds like a losing proposition to take on a modern army armed with AKs with an old World War I relic, but with the Lee Enfield's extreme long range and accuracy, Russian troops are frequently getting shot to pieces by these things. So that does just go to show that depending on circumstances, older doesn't always mean worse. And on a personal note, I used to have a number four Lee Enfield, and I liked it okay. But after a few trades here and there, I was able to get my hands on this number one Mark III star 
That was a type I always wanted. I don't know. There's just something about this version. It's that blunt nose, that notch rear sight, as opposed to the aperture sight on the number four. I just think this one looks cooler. What can I say? If you're a Milserp type like me, you've probably heard this a time or two. There are two kinds of people in the world, Mauser people and Lee Enfield people. Me? Well, I'm an M1 Garand guy, but well, I already did that video. So let's stick to the Lee Enfield and get back to the range. It's time for more shooting with this classic. We're now going to do our second shoot with the number one Lee Enfield and so much for the stripper clips. Uh, one of them was a little too bent to load effectively and what's the point of only having one stripper clip and a 10 round rifle. But we're going to go ahead and uh, hit that zombie again and with this old surplus ammo, let's see if we get any more hang fires. Nice. So that was our episode on the short magazine Lee Enfield, number one Mark III. That was a smoother shoot. No hang fires that time. Everything went just fine. Anyway, do hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching it. And if you like what we do, there's a perfectly good subscribe button down there. I'm the Pony 314, and I'll see you at the range.